black woman, this is what you need to do. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't care. I don't have a medical license. I've never done anything in the medical profession, but I know how to read. One thing these companies are doing, I don't care if it's your doctor, you love your doctor. They are scammers, number one. Remember, anything that has to do with making money, people are going to try to scam you, especially if you're black. Especially if you're black. Because they know we, they know we're not going to read. They know we, okay, the doctor told me I'm going to get it. So it's like, don't ever believe a doctor. They're not honest people. They're the most... They make you sick. You got scammed, you. scammed, scammed. Have you ever wondered how much trust we put into the hands of our medical professionals? We rely on them in our most vulnerable moments, believing in their knowledge and compassion. But what if that trust was betrayed? Take the story of Dr. Farid Fatah, a Detroit area doctor who, rather than using his medical degree to save lives, used it to destroy destroy them. This is a tale of deception, greed, and a shocking disregard for human life. Dr. Fata exploited his patient's trust, providing unnecessary chemotherapy treatments and giving false cancer diagnoses. His motivation? Personal gain. He manipulated his patients, their fear, and their hope all to steal millions from Medicare. His actions were not just a violation of trust, but a direct assault on the lives of those who placed their faith in him. A doctor's oath is first do no harm. But what happens when that sacred oath is broken for personal gain? Behind every crime, there are victims whose lives are changed forever. Watch this clip of this con man's victims tell their story. Courtroom sketches could not adequately capture the anguish of the victims today as one by one they confronted the cancer doctor who prescribed aggressive chemotherapy for patients he knew were not ill and for those who were ordering treatments that were excessive while billing Medicare $34 million. In court, Dr. Fareed Fada showed no emotion for a man who prosecutors said would bully and browbeat patients who dared to question his his treatment. Fata has already pleaded guilty to fraud and other charges. A memo from prosecutors demanding a life sentence said Fata would tell his patients they risked death without him, telling one, quote, your life or your money. From Laura Stetfeld, whose father died in Fata's care, you poisoned, tortured, and murdered my dad. From Maggie Dorsey, even though I am not dead, I am a shadow of my former self. It went on for four hours in federal court in Detroit, and it involved only a handful of the 553 victims prosecutors identified, people who were physically, emotionally, and financially devastated. Expert witnesses took the stand to describe the overuse of chemotherapy. One drug, rituximab, is typically given eight times for aggressive lymphoma, but Dr. Fata prescribed it to one patient 94 times. Monica Flagg, who was falsely told by Fata she had multiple myeloma, was too distraught to speak in court. Treatments Fata prescribed left her continually exhausted and in pain. What do you think of him? What do I think of him? I'm very angry. I cannot believe any doctor would would betray so many people. And he did. You saw him in court. I did. I cried when I first saw him walk in the door. Did you see a man who was contrite? He showed no emotion. He he didn't care. How does that make you feel? Oh, oh, I was very angry. Very. A good question is how he got away with this, and Scott, the answer is that Dr. Fata was a well-respected physician backed up by other well-respected physicians and a prominent local hospital. But it was a doctor who worked for him who ultimately blew the whistle on his actions. And prosecutors are asking for a 175-year sentence. Imagine entrusting your health, your very life to a doctor, only to discover that this trust was misplaced, abused for personal gain. 
This was the harsh reality for hundreds of patients under the care of Dr. Farid Fata. Their voices, their stories bear witness to this devastating betrayal. We hear from a young man who lost his mother to cancer, not because she had cancer, but because she was denied the necessary treatment. Dr. Fata's greed superseded his Hippocratic oath, causing unspeakable harm and loss. There are countless voices, each echoing a similar tale of deception, pain, and loss. Parents, spouses, siblings, children, all victims of a man who saw them not as people in need of care, but as pawns in his scheme. Their stories are a haunting reminder of the human cost of greed. They speak of trust violated, of lives disrupted, of dreams shattered. Yet Yet they also speak of resilience, of the courage to come forward, to share their pain, and to seek justice. Their lives were forever altered by a man they trusted with their health. A man who saw them not as patients, but as commodities. It's really unbelievable. A doctor, someone sworn to protect and heal, instead chooses to exploit and harm. If you are diagnosed with a terminal or serious disease, you should get a second opinion. It could be life-saving and also save you thousands of dollars if you were misdiagnosed. It will also give you peace of mind that the diagnosis is correct. When trust is broken in such a profound way, what are the consequences? In the end, Dr. Fada's actions led to a sentence of 45 years in prison, a sentence he well earned due to his deceit and malpractice. If you are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. His story serves as a grim reminder of the importance of trust in medicine. Patients entrust their lives to the hands of medical professionals. They believe in their doctor's expertise, their dedication, their compassion. But when that trust is shattered, it sends shockwaves through the entire medical community. Dr. Fada's case has understandably shaken that trust for many. His patients, their families, and indeed the public at large are left questioning, how can this happen? Can we truly trust our doctors? In response to this shocking breach of trust, steps are being taken within the medical community to prevent such actions in the future. There is a renewed focus on transparency, on communication, on ensuring that the patient-doctor relationship is one of mutual respect and understanding. Rigorous checks and balances are being implemented, and there is a push towards more comprehensive oversight of medical practices. But perhaps the most important step is acknowledging the damage done and learning from it. The medical community must take this as a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the immense responsibility they hold. They must work tirelessly to rebuild the trust that has been broken, to reassure patients that their health and well-being is and always will be the top priority. In the end, trust is the foundation of the patient-doctor relationship. When that trust is broken, the consequences are far-reaching and devastating. Thank you for watching. If you care, please share.